Yes, we're still in AD 28 and we're at event 32 out of 36 found in Matthew and I'd be dangerously close to saying that it may also be the story of Luke 11, 14. Uh, but uh, my, my study Bible says that it's not found any place else, but I, I certainly see so many similarities to Luke 11, 15, uh, 14 uh, that I'd be hard pressed not to say that it's found there as well. Nevertheless, uh, Jesus is leaving Peter's house having healed the blind man and it says they brought to him a dumb man that's not without intelligence that's a man that couldn't speak and uh, that he was also demon possessed they brought th that man to Jesus evidently he couldn't uh, take care of that himself that uh, he was in that kind of state in verse 33 of Matthew 9 it says after the demon was cast out. Now, I think that's very interesting because you see, Jesus didn't go after the effects and touch the man's tongue because he couldn't speak as he touched the men's eyes because they couldn't see, but rather he cast the demon out because the demon was the very thing that was keeping the man from being able to speak. And uh, so that's going after the cause instead of the effect. It'd be kind of uh, like... Uh, treating somebody with some antacids uh, which would help them and their stomach feeling uh, when in fact there was a virus ulcer in the man's stomach. Uh, the virus ulcer in the stomach is what the cause of the problem is. Treating him with antacids would only be treating the effects of the problem. And Jesus goes after the cause of the problem, the demon possession. Now I know that in today's world people really shudder when you start talking about the devil or demons. Yet the Bible certainly speaks loud and clear that there is such a thing and that we need to be aware of that. As a matter of fact, I would suggest that you read Romans chapter 8 verses 19 through 22. That's Romans 8, 19 through 22. I'll post that at the end of this devotion so that you can read it without grabbing your Bible. And um, it says that the Pharisees in verse 34 were saying he cast out the demons by the power of the ruler of demons, Beelzebul. Uh, and we find that that accusation was made in Matthew 12, 24, in Mark 2, uh, excuse me, Mark 3, 22, and Luke 11, 15. Uh, all of these uh, have accusations made by either scribes, Pharisees, or others uh, that Jesus was acting with the power of the devil. And in each case, Jesus clearly makes a good argument, which is, why would the devil fight himself? Why would the devil uh, give power to cast out demons? Uh, why not just continue with a win-win situation? allowing the demons to continue their uh, possession of others and uh, the work that they're doing. Uh, and uh, quite obviously, Jesus was not of the devil. Uh, he died for you and for me. He uh, gives us the forgiveness of sin through his payment on the cross. And we should not be confused or uh, think that D Jesus was... Uh, working on behalf of the devil because uh, there's nothing about his life that would indicate that he was of the devil. Only the fact that he loved us, cared for us, his grace and his mercy and his death on the cross gives us the ability to be forgiven and to be freed from all unrighteousness. And of course, it does require our repentance. I have a pastor in the Polk Association who really likes to make sure that everybody understands that there's repentance that's necessary in salvation and there is you must turn from sin and self and turn to christ and christ alone if you want real forgiveness so here we are uh, jesus doesn't touch a tongue here but rather casts out a demon and the man who was dumb that could not speak was able to speak immediately because he went to the cause of the problem and the Pharisees accused him of doing it in the power of the devil. And Jesus makes a great argument that says, how does that make any sense or any logic at all? 
that the devil would fight against himself. And that's my thought for the day. God bless you and have a great day.